I've always been interested in science and medicine, but early in my training, I knew that I needed to focus on both, that I wanted to have a foot in both of those worlds. A major driving factor for wanting to study Parkinson's disease is because there are no disease-modifying therapies. And in the realm of neurology, this was a major and continues to be a major unmet need. So I really wanted to contribute to that. Parkinson's disease is characterized by movement abnormalities. And so this might manifest itself as being slow to move, slow to get dressed, slow to get showered, difficulties with doing up buttons, difficulties with hand dexterity, so problems writing. Other people may experience some balance problems and slowness of walking or shuffling gait. Some people will develop some tremor, although not all patients do. That's the kind of classic idea of Parkinson's disease and, and we require to see that in a person to actually make a diagnosis. But what we now know after you know many decades and lots of experience with people with Parkinson's disease is that the breadth of symptoms is really, really wide and there's a lot of abnormalities that people will experience. So problems with cognition, many people might develop dementia later on in their Parkinson's disease. A lot of people can have mood problems, sleep problems, problems with maintaining their blood pressure, problems with regulating things like their bowel and their bladder. And this whole constellation of symptoms causes a large amount of disability for people with Parkinson's disease. Um, and as a consequence, really needs a very personalized approach to treating Parkinson's disease. So one of the major limitations of our treatments for Parkinson's disease is that they don't have the capability of stopping brain cells from dying. We call that disease modification. So the treatments that we have can mask symptoms, but they can't actually modify the disease, meaning that they can't stop the progression, they can't slow the progression. And the area that I've really focused on in research, hearing and seeing the stories of people in the clinic who don't have these therapies is really to try and find these types of therapies. One approach is to actually try and find brand new drugs involved in pathways in the cells that haven't been described before for Parkinson's disease and finding if we can develop completely brand new therapies in that way. It's an exciting approach because there's a lot of novelty to it. There's also a lot of failure to it because it's very high risk. The other kind of prong that we're taking is what we call a repurposing approach or a repositioning approach where we look at old drugs drugs that are being used to treat a variety of other conditions outside of Parkinson's disease, and ask the question, is it possible that some of these drugs that are being used to treat other diseases could actually be used to treat Parkinson's disease? And then I guess the third approach is a bit of a combination of the two where we're looking at drugs that are available and then other technologies that could help us to make these drugs amenable to treating Parkinson's disease. What I love most about my job is really the people. It's a real privilege to be involved in the care of individuals with Parkinson's disease and actually to be a part of their life for their journey through this disease. When we take on a patient at the Movement Disorders Clinic, it's usually the beginning of years or decades together, seeing the changes that happen over the course of the disease, managing the issues that come as the disease progresses and it becomes a lifelong relationship that you don't get in every aspect of medicine or every part of neurology. What I'm most excited about as a researcher and a clinician is our enhanced and increased understanding about Parkinson's disease, both at the level of the cell and at the level of the patient, and our appreciation that Parkinson's disease is probably not, or most definitely not, a single disease, but actually a large number of different diseases that we put under this umbrella term of Parkinson's disease. One day we hope to find a cure for Parkinson's. <laughs>